He's the reigning world champion. Will you welcome the brilliant rocket himself, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Good evening from Teddington Studios and welcome to the 1990 Thames Snooker Classic. That was one of my dreams was to, uh, was to qualify for that. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Great shot there from Ronnie O'Sullivan. Yeah, that was when I was a good player. I was 14. And I remember Steve Davis commentating. Advanced positional play. And Davis said, um, that's an advanced positional play. <laughs> and it was, because it was like, I knew that red was there, but I just knew that once I get the reds open, it was game over. Steve Davis was saying, now this kid is fantastic. Anyone who's held a cue before knew he was a genius. I was ready at 13 or 14 to play top professional snooker in hindsight. I didn't know it at the time because I just never had that belief in myself. But I was getting the results. I was beating Willie Fawn on his own table at 14. But at the time, I never thought anything of it. But I was ready, you know. I was, I was playing a man's game at 13 or a professional game at 13. Ronnie was always fearless. You know, and, and that was something which hadn't come into the professional game. At the time, the top pros were percentage players, where they would calculate the risk-reward ratio of every shot. Uh, Ronnie never, went, never played percentages. Well, here comes Dad, Ronnie Senior. His <laughs> dad's a good snooker player, he's a good hurdler. Mm -hmm. That was a tremendous performance. Ronnie Junior, first of all. Are you really only 14? Yeah. Just six weeks ago. I'm 14. <laughs> <laughs> He's my biggest fan. He's my biggest fan. I get embarrassed sometimes when we start talking about him. Like, oh, close my ears, like, shut my eyes, like, 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 saying, be quiet. But he's proud, you know? He's proud of me, you know? And, uh, yeah, yeah, he's... But I don't like it when he praises me. I hate praise anyway. Dad, stop running away. Come here. I know you're a bit shy. <laughs> Tell me, when did you realise he might be a good snooker player? When he was beating me. <laughs> You're pretty useful yourself, are you? Useless. <laughs> no, I was playing for a few quid. He was taking a few quid off me, and I turned it in there. If I was left to my own devices, I'd be on a beach in Spain, putting deck chairs up, having a coffee, reading the paper, and just plodding along in life. I'm a plodder, really. You play fairly quickly. Well, when you're playing well, you do play quickly. You think quicker, and all the ball seems easier. No nerves about being on television? No. As long as Dad isn't sitting in the front row, that's right. Yeah. Isn't it? You don't like that. <laughs> So Dad knows his place, and uh, yeah. you certainly seem to know yours, Ronnie. Well done. Thanks. Yeah, so that was, uh, that was my first debut on telly. It was all downhill after that. <laughs> was. At the age you were, what was the hardest part of your dad not being around? The first minute I found out he was got what he got, uh, that was the hardest moment, definitely. And a few days after that, because it was all settled in, the enormity of it all, you know. I didn't realise. I just thought he was going to come home. I just thought, go through the thing, did as everyone was saying, you know, it wasn't, you know, it was just an accident, really. <laughs> you know, for two people in the wrong place at the wrong time you know so for me I didn't expect it so to, to hear it at the age I was was uh it killed me killed me man done me you know I just didn't know what to do I was like oh, done me so uh, that was the hardest bit and then having to realize what people were there telling me was like, you know what, he ain't coming home for 20 years. What, what do you mean? I went, minimum 20. I was like, oh, I couldn't get me around it. I thought, well, that's it, he's gone. Forget about him. That's it. And then I come down the house the next morning, I got out of bed and it was quiet. The house was quiet. Because he ain't quiet. He kind of like chats and he's a people person. It's difficult to get inside a young man's head, you know, when you haven't got a father figure that was so important in your life is no longer there. 
I was demotivated, if you like. It was no one was there to tell me what to do, and I needed it. But you still feel, in a way, that it's still you and him against the world. It's like a crusade. You know, no one believed in Ronnie more than Ronnie Senior, and no one was closer to Ronnie Senior than Ronnie Junior. Then I become eight, seventeen, eighteen. I thought I'm a man now. I need to kind of like sort myself out, you know. So, you know, it's now become a job. It's like, okay, you know, a job plus I need to fulfil my potential. Yeah, a proud moment. Definitely a proud moment because obviously. You know, I knew how much it meant to him. You know, 12 months before, I lost to Cliff Wilson before the television stage. And I, I remember going back to my hotel room, crying my eyes out. I smashed my cue case on the floor. My cue come flying out, my cue case. I was walking, I was devastated. I was devastated. This young man is not 18 yet. And like all great players, he's finishing in style. And so then so for 12 months later, to go and win the UK, I was like, mental. Yeah, Stephen Hendry will shake his hand. I know he admires Ronnie's play. We all do. The title of the 1993 United Kingdom champion, Ronnie O'Sullivan. UK champion, 17 years of age. Like, wow. I beat my hero, Steve Davis. I beat Stephen Hendry, my new hero. I just thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. We snooker players in the inside, we knew how good you were. So, although... Maybe it was one year too early he won it. It wasn't a surprise because we know how good he was. So I beat all these people in one event and all of a sudden overnight I've gone from no one knowing me to all of a sudden the UK champion. And I still didn't realise the impact it had until the next day when I went out and had breakfast because I've gone from no one ever recognising me to all of a sudden people were like, oh, and I was like, shit, people were pointing at me. He pocketed a cheque for £70,000, but I have to say, he says he'd give it all up to spend Christmas with his dad. He's with us now. Hi, Ronnie. Hello. Hi, nice Hi. To see First of all, many congratulations. You don't look 70, doesn't you? Look I was just saying, you look like about 23, 24. That's what uh, living in a snooker all does uh, for you. Misspent youth. That's right. <laughs> but you don't <laughs> drink, do you? you? I don't drink and I, and I don't smoke and I don't really uh, go out to, to clubbing it much because I've uh, dedicated much of my time to my snooker in that. 17 year old Ronnie O'Sullivan is tipped to become the world's youngest number one. If he does, he says he owes it all to his dad, who he visited today in prison. Ronnie Sr. is serving a life sentence at Gartree Prison in Leicestershire. It was a tearful reunion when Ronnie Jr. took his new trophy to the prison to show it off to his dad. I went to see my dad and took the trophy in there and that was like... TV crow down there, I was like, what's going on here? You know, but I just wanted him to go, yeah, mate, that's for you. you no, know, that's for you. And, uh... So he could just go, you know what, you know, that put a lot of things to rest, you know, that answered a lot of, for me, it kind of dealt with a lot of, like, you can get on with whatever you've got to do now for the next 18 years, Dad, you know what I mean, I've given you a bit of silverware, I've proved that you ain't to blame for my, whatever, I've, you know, that's it, we can move on now, you can move on, I can move on and enjoy whatever we do. Especially with all me, my mum being there, my sister, sort of like, they were sort of like, couldn't believe it, everyone coming up brought autographs and you can see me dad's sort of like he feels at home and, and he's just sort of like really proud of me and I'm and I'm more to the point proud of him because of he's well, he's made me, I haven't really made myself, I've got a lot to owe to him and, and the way I am is the way he is. He will even if I want a tournament, history he used to say. I go, What? He means history. It's over. Forget it. Move on. Next one. I'd be like, really? Okay. He's just told me it's history now, the press is nice and that, he says, but Thursday morning get ben, back down to the practice and that, he says, because one victory is not enough. His dad's probably watching this morning, anything you want to say to him? Yeah, I just want to say what a good visit it was yesterday, and it, and it was definitely better than winning the tournament, seeing his face and reactions, and we had two and a half hours of laughing and joking, and, mm. and at the end of it, he just patted me on the back and says, go and, go and get another trophy. I remember looking at it thinking, they look good for a 147. Amazing, absolutely amazing. I just went... I don't think I suffered with depression. I think I suffered with snooker depression. I had a five-year period where I just went mental.
This is a, a picture of Damien Hurst done for me, my friend. And uh, it's my first 147. Um, five minutes, 20 seconds. And I remember when I first see it, I went, that's my first 147, without Damien even saying anything. So I remember this red. What? And I remember that black going over there. I just remember thinking, I remember looking at it thinking, them, they look good for a 147. We had a 147 in five and a half minutes. Don't think that'll ever be done again. Impossible, I think. One more rat in the frame safe, but Ronnie's got other things in his mind, and so has everybody in the audience. Could be a 147. I don't believe this. That, that can never be beaten. He was absolutely playing speed wise, twice above himself. And then I spoke to Ronnie, I said, why did you do that, Ronnie? He said, because if I stopped and think, I would have missed. I remember watching it, because there's a lot of cue over hanging. And I just went, like that. <laughs> just a bit of magic in sport, that was. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Like two hole-in-ones on a trot, something like that. When he made that, he kind of, uh, made his name through that and then ever since then people have just loved watching him and um, you really don't know what's going through his head so people just um, tune in to just see what he's going to do. Alex Higgins is 14, was 14 years older than me. I'm 14 years older than Ronnie O'Sullivan and now you've got Judge Trump who's 14 years younger than Ronnie so maybe there's always going to be an entertaining player out there. I'd say everyone uh, sort of my age used to who's got into Suko has probably modelled their game on him. Um, when I first started playing, I used to play really quick, um, just to play like him. Did you always play fast? Uh, yeah, I was always a quick thinker. Um, I had good technique, but I, f I used to think quick, so I'd see the shot early. Um, so I was quite a consistent player, but I was quick, which was kind of not heard of really because you was either methodical and slow or you was quick but a bit flamboyant with your technique. I first met him when I was eight. Uh, my dad got me tickets to the Welsh Open and um, Ronnie was there so um, luckily I got to meet him and have my photo with him in that um, which was 15 years ago now. I've managed Ronnie O'Sullivan twice. Some of the greatest days of my life have been with Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie O'Sullivan has also driven me round the bend, driven me nuts. And there are times when I could hug him, and there are times when I could kick him. I prefer the hugging. Oh, I just remember uh, going to school, messing around, playing a bit of football, painting little toy cars, stuff like that. A lot of the time I spent in Hackney with my nan, because my mum and dad both worked, so a lot of my summer holidays were in Hackney, riding around in my BMX, just having fun with the kids out there. Uh, my mum and dad basically worked round the clock, and a lot of the time I just used to live with another family who lived round the corner. Uh, and then there was old pairs that were brought in who used to look after me most of the time, until my sister was born, and I, I think I was about eight or nine then. And then my mum stopped working, and, and that was it. You know, I was at home all the time with my mum. That's why I bought this house, because it was near my mum. So I thought, get all my washing done. And just two minutes. Down the road, she? Yeah, she lives 20 doors away. What were school days like? I hated school. Oh, I couldn't stand it. You know, I used to. Oh, if I could never have gone from the age of 10, if, if I didn't go do another day of school, I'd have been a happy, happy kid. But obviously my mum, um, she was like the one that always used to say, well, what happens if he doesn't make it as a snooker player? You know, he's got to have something to fall back on. You know, I had a five-year period from the age of 19 to 24 where I just went mental. My dad was banged up, my mum was away, I was up that prison, then visit my mum here and I'd lost my licence and I just thought, you know what? I just lost the plot and I just went out and had a good time for four or five years and just 